This is Mrs. O'Neill for your safety notes. So you should have already filled in the first two pages of your packet. Now you can answer the following questions as a review um, which lab equipment to use. Now there are multiple possibilities and um, some things like a beaker might be able to be used more than once. So pause the video, write your answers, and then continue to play my answers and see uh, and check your answers, right? And make sure that they're correct. And of course you're going to have a lab equipment quiz in the very, very near future. So which lab equipment to use? Again, if you haven't done so already, pause and answer those questions. So for number one, when you're holding 50 milliliters of water, you might use a beaker or a flask. If you're melting a crystal over a Bunsen burner, you might use a crucible or an evaporating dish. Now with a crucible, you would use what's called crucible tongs because those tongs are special to hold the lid of that crucible. If you're pouring acid from one container to another, you might use a beaker because of that pouring spout and, and or a funnel. Now, when you're measuring exactly a certain amount of volume, the only thing you can use is a graduated cylinder. So if I'm asking you to measure out 43.0 milliliters of water, you can only use a graduated cylinder because that's going to give you an exact volume versus the beaker or the flask even if they have those markings on them. If you're massing out 120.0 grams you're going to use a balance probably you said balance. Now a balance we can use straight up when we're measuring maybe a beaker or a piece of metal. However if we are massing out something like sodium chloride which is salt which is this white powder here uh, we're going to use a weighing boat to put on top of the balance first because we don't want to just pour the sodium chloride right on top of the balance. It would be very difficult to kind of clean it off and get what you need. Um, so we will go over the procedure the first time that we use the balance, um, but what you're going to do basically is you're going to uh, put the weighing dish on the balance, you're going to hit the tear or zero, and then it's going to pretend that that weighing boat doesn't really exist. Then you can add as much of that sodium chloride or substance uh, to that weighing dish so it, you're only a one-stop you know, balance um, in order to get that mass. Number six, when we are suspending glassware over a Bunsen burner, you're going to use this ring stand, you're going to use the iron ring, and you also need the wire gauze. Why do you need the wire gauze? Well, if you put a beaker right on there, depending on the size, first of all, it's not going to be stable, and it could go right through. So the wire gauze is for two reasons. Number one is to make that beaker stable on it, and think about the kitchen and your stove. Hmm, I don't know about you, but again, with the burner, you have one flame on your stove, you don't have one flame you either have a ring of fire or you have like um like a glass top maybe that has like a ring or even your uh, electric stove has like a ring of, of of heat well this then is kind of like that ring of heat it takes that one fire or that one flame from the burner and it spreads out that heat so that it's going to heat up that beaker a little bit more evenly uh, so here's our burner here's our hose and of course the striker if we are going to use the burner if you're removing solids, you're going to use that scoopula, very similar to a spoon in your kitchen. If you are using or keeping the contents from uh, spilling out, we're going to use that watch glass kind of as a cover. And if we're mixing two liquids together, you might have thought of either the stirring rod or even a test tube. We're going to mix things together in a test tube to see a reaction. Uh, just to remind you that this is considered a test tube rack. It just holds the test tube for um, stabilization when you're not really using it. This is a test tube holder. We're going to use that to hold the test tube while heating and of course a test tube brush to clean it. And if we're separating a solid and a liquid, you're going to be using that funnel and a filter paper. So do you know what this is? Hopefully you said it's a thermometer used to measure temperature. This is a pipette, or I would even accept dropper, of course, used to drop chemicals or, or dispense chemicals or transfer chemicals from one to another, small amounts, or using microscale um, labs. And this is a mortar and pestle, taking a big chunk of a solid and <clears throat> crunching it up into uh, little pieces. So you also have the availability to you to review, um, to other review uh, websites. Uh, they are right on those uh, Honors Chem 1 links website. If you go to my website through the um, 
through the uh, Whitehall High School website, uh, which I should have shown you how to get there, um, but I'm not sure if I did yet or not, uh, but that's where that is. Uh, so there's also two here that you can choose from to review uh, that lab equipment before your quiz. So this is just something fun to do, your chemist equipment word find. Again, find as many as you can. Make sure that you list them here. There's about 14 of them, so you should probably be able to find at least 10. I'm not looking for, again, to find them every single one of them. So there's your word find, and try to find at least 10. There might be some extras that you haven't heard of, or there might be some ones that you find that, you know, that are, are not actually part of it, but it's still there. So, I mentioned the kitchen before. What is significant about the kitchen in chemistry? Well, on your notes packet there, you have a box. Pause the video and write your thoughts about how we can compare or what are similar, what are some things that are similar between the kitchen in your house or apartment or where you live and the lab. At this point, you should have paused, you should have wrote down um, your thoughts, and now you're going to play the video to hear my thoughts. So how about that heat source that I mentioned, right? In your uh, kitchen, you have an oven or a stove that's going to give us that heat source, and in the lab is going to be the burner or hot plate. How about the sink and water? And again, in the kitchen, <clears throat> we're going to use that sink and water for certain things, and in the lab, we're going to use it for certain things. So read over that, and that should make sense. How about the garbage can, okay? So think about the garbage can in your house. So for some of you, most of you, maybe you dispose of your solids in the garbage can. However, we do not have a garbage disposal in the lab area. So for those of you who are used to kind of taking your crumbs and putting it in the sink because the garbage disposal will get rid of it, that's fine. But I want to remind you, we do not have a garbage disposal. So all of our solids are going to go in a garbage can. And how about the things that you use on a daily basis, right? In the kitchen, you're using dishes, pots, and utensils. And in the lab, we're going to be using those test tubes and scopulas. And the last thing I want to bring to your attention, of course, is money. Things that are very expensive in your kitchen, there are things that are very expensive in the lab. There are things that are not so expensive in the kitchen and not so expensive in the lab. However, there are there's no, 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 no horseplay. I want everything to be safe, number one. I want everybody to be safe um, in a safe environment when we're doing labs, as well as everything costs money to replace. So we want to be careful with what we're doing in the lab situation. So your safety contract is very, very important. You should have gotten two copies. If you didn't already, I will be providing you with two copies. One, again, you're going to get signed, and it must be returned in order for you to do the labs. And the other one is going to stay in your notebook as a constant reminder that safety is number one priority. So you should read over all those safety contract rules, and if you need any clarification on them, please ask. And I believe there's only like 36 of them. However, there are a few that I'm going to mention again right here in your notes. So a couple of things to think about since we're going to be doing mostly videos in our class. So first, you're going to pause the video. You're going to write in the blanks, and these should be bolded. The words that are bolded are going to be what you're writing in your notes. But you should read as you write. So you're not just filling in those blanks. You are filling in those blanks, but you're reading that statement because I do not to repeat every single word that's on the slide. So pause, fill in those notes, and then play to hear my words. So of course, you're always going to be wearing goggles. Uh, that second bullet, you always need to be in a responsible manner uh, because I want everybody safe. No food or beverages or gum because of the fumes and any dust particles that might be in the air. And we're going to go over in this packet the location and use of safety equipment. Again, pause, fill in the blanks, read as you write, and then play to hear my words. Again, that disposal of those chemicals, make sure we do that properly. Almost all liquids are going to go down the sink, and almost all solids are going to go in the garbage. And if anything is broke, there's a proper box in the back of my room to put that broken glassware. Clean everything before and after, and the last, last thing you should be cleaning is your hands. And this third bullet, I do not get mad, okay? Please, please, please understand that I need to know any accidents or injuries so I get you back into something safe, um, and then we'll go from there. If there has to be consequences because the accident was um, uh, not necessarily accidental, uh, then we will deal with that uh, afterwards. 
The first one should hopefully make sense that you're not going to return those unused chemicals to the original containers because it would cause possibly cross-contamination. Hot and cold glass looks exactly the same. Uh, there's one of me and there's a bunch of you, so please examine the glassware and equipment before you use it, and if anything breaks or damaged, let me know whether it's when you get it or even during the experiment. Again, I don't get mad, but I need you to safe, and it's easier for you to check all of them instead of me always worrying about checking them as well. This uh, bullet, very, very important. Please, please, please turn on the faucet first before putting anything under Underneath it. They are very, very high pressure. And if you get a chemical on your skin or eye, yes, you're going to have to um, rinse it out for at least 15 minutes. And remember to have a partner tell me. At this point, you're going to pause the video. You're going to look at this picture. Uh, just as a reminder, Betty here is looking at a mirror. And you're going to answer those questions one through five. At this point, you should have paused the video, answered those questions, and now here are some answers. Number one, I didn't give you the answers. So if you need to reread your safety contract to figure out what Sue, John, and Jim uh, are doing unsafely, uh, please make sure you're understanding uh, that this whole chart does need to get filled out for you to uh, receive full credit on this packet when I check it over. Uh, Bob, after the accident, should again tell the teacher immediately. Again, we need you back into a safe environment. Three out of many things. There are many, many things that should not be there. Hopefully you at least found three. Ray and Tim will be asked to sit down, get that zero, and possibly a write-up. Carl and Tina are doing lots of things properly. And location of your safety equipment and how to use it. So here's our safety shower. So on your packet, you have a picture of the room. You're either going to draw or write the safety shower. So guys, here's where you're sitting. Here's all of the um, desks. You're looking at the teacher's desk. And on the left is a door to the back room. And right there is your safety shower. Again, either write it or draw it in. And you should have room to, to know how to use it. Again, I'm not going to go through this. Pretty self-explanatory. So pause. Make sure you write something down. The eye wash station is right under the safety shower. So again, here's our room. The safety shower and eye wash is in the same spot. Just make sure you either draw it or write it in. How to use it. Again, we're going to have to remove those goggles because they should be on your eyes at the moment. Uh, and of course, everything else should be self-explanatory. The fire extinguisher, again, so you're sitting here. Here's the teacher's desk. It is attached to the teacher's desk. So again, either write it or draw it in. I'm not, again, looking for artistic ability and how to use the fire extinguisher. Now, in this case, if I ask you how to use the fire extinguisher, if you do not say pull the pin first, it's not going to work to begin with. The fire blanket. On your paper, you have what's called a hood here. So to the, uh, again, looking at your eyes and looking at the teacher's desk, to the left is a hood that sometimes we put on when we're doing experiments, and underneath it is a cabinet, and that's where the fire blanket is. We use the fire blanket when a person's on fire, so how are we going to use it? Well, you're going to tell that person to stop, drop, and roll like you learned in elementary school, and then wrap the person around it. Goggles and aprons, again, pretty self-explanatory, but where are they? The goggles are in a white cabinet um, in the corner back here with the, uh, the sink, and your aprons are hanging here. So how to use the goggles and aprons, again, pretty self-explanatory. Okay, we'll see you in class.